You're tuned to Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Hey guys, welcome to episode 8 of Once Upon a Fairy Tale. This is Disney Dwayne. This is going to be the first part of a two part special on Disney music. There's just so much to cover, and it'd be much easier to digest things this way. We'll start by looking at a brief history of Disney music, as well as the evolution of Walt Disney Records, and then we'll explore all the many different types of Disney music. This includes movie soundtracks, animated and live action, sequels, spin off albums, TV series, musicals, cut songs. Yeah, there's a lot of Disney music, and this is just part one. And if I may, I would venture to say that this is probably one of the most comprehensive guides you'll find. I certainly wish it was as easy as me just going to one website to get all the information I need for this podcast, but it seemed there were always missing pieces of music that was not featured that I knew about, so I figured the best way would be to compile this myself. Some of our podcasts will eventually get outdated, but I hope this one fills the gap in terms of it being an essential Disney resource for some time to come. And as with each podcast, there are notes available on the Once Upon a Fairy Tale Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash once upon a fairy tale time. If you're listening to this on our YouTube channel, there's a direct link in the description below, as well as markers to specific parts of the podcast. The good thing about the notes, unlike the podcast, is that they will continue to be updated. All right, ready for some history? Walt Disney's first Mickey Mouse shorts were intended to be silent films. But when he saw that Warner Brothers' The Jazz Singer proved to be a hit in 1927, he jumped on the bandwagon, and Steamboat Willie was the first short to feature music. Disney hired his first musical director and composer, Carl Stalling, and together they began to create the Silly Symphonies. The 1920s saw the emergence of jazz, blues, and Broadway, offering a refreshing and rebellious take to classical music, which was considered too serious and conventional. This is precisely why Disney used the word silly for his second series, yet still be able to keep a certain amount of class with the use of symphonies. It was also Walt's interest in classical music that brought about Fantasia later on. Needless to say, every step of the way was a learning curve and things simply kept improving. After two years, Stalling left Disney to join Warner Brothers, but it was new addition Frank Churchill that gave the company their first big hit, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? It was such a success also because it symbolized the fight against the wolf at the door during America's Depression era. Music continued to play a huge part in shaping the heart of many Disney animated films. Interestingly enough, Disney was the first to create the soundtrack for films. No one else had put music onto a disc prior to that. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs became the first feature film soundtrack in 1937, followed by Pinocchio and Dumbo. At the time, there wasn't a Walt Disney Records, and music was released under RCA's HMV label. By 1950, the Walt Disney Music Company was founded to handle all music publishing matters. In 1954, Walt created and hosted a new TV series entitled Disneyland to promote the upcoming park of the same name. It featured episodic adventures of Davy Crockett, a 19th century American folk hero. A year later, Disney created a second series to help finance his park. The Mickey Mouse Club at the time released music on discs pressed by Golden Records and distributed by Ampar Records. It was the success of the song Ballad of Davy Crockett and the music of the Mickey Mouse Club that convinced Walt's brother, Roy Disney, that the company should enter the record business. That's how Disneyland Records was formed in 1956. By 1971, Disneyland Records was also called Disneyland Vista Records. In 1989, Disneyland Records was renamed Walt Disney Records. Today, Walt Disney Records' selection of products range from traditional studio albums and original soundtracks to audiobooks and karaoke albums. Now let's talk about the music. There are three websites where you'll find a list of most of the Disney albums released, although they are most certainly not complete. The websites are the Disney Wikia page, Wikipedia's Disney Albums page, and Wikipedia's Walt Disney Records discography. Again, there's no website that provides the complete, ever-growing list, and our podcast notes don't cover everything either, but it's probably your best bet. Now let's start with Disney movies. There's a whole list you can browse through on the link provided. 
Disney has a slew of movies which include their main animated feature films, direct-to-video ones, and live-action movies as well. All of these have a soundtrack of their own. The movie soundtracks are probably the most straightforward. You'll still be surprised at how much you might not have heard. For example, do you remember Where the Dream Takes You, a pop song written for the movie Atlantis, The Lost Empire? Or the Tummy Song in the 2011 release of Winnie the Pooh, written by the same team that wrote Frozen? Which leads me to our next category, direct-to-video sequels. Winnie the Pooh alone has numerous full-length movies. Along with many other sequels to Disney's main animated feature films comes a trove of songs. Some of these movies have official soundtracks available for purchase and some don't. How many of these sequels do you know? Let's explore some of them in alphabetical order. Starting with Aladdin, there were two sequels after the original movie named The Return of Jafar and Aladdin the King of Thieves. The official soundtrack released includes music from both these movies, including new songs like a new duet between Aladdin and Jasmine called Out of Thin Air. Incidentally, Brad Kane and Leia Salonga, the singing voices, also have another duet released in Leia's album called We Could Be In Love. Other sequels include Atlantis, Milo's Return, Bambi 2, Beauty and the Beast and Enchanted Christmas, Belle's Magical World, Brother Bear 2, Cinderella 2, Dreams Come True, and one of my favorites, Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time. One of my favorite moments in this movie is when Cinderella sings More Than a Dream. Unfortunately, there is no soundtrack available. Here's an interesting note. The Disney Cruise musical Twice Charmed, an original twist on the Cinderella story, also has music and lyrics provided by the same team of Alan Zachary and Michael Weiner. However, the stories are different, even though both explore the possibility of the stepsisters having their happy ending. More about music from the cruise ships in part two. Back to the sequel lineup, we have Fox and the Hound 2, Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, which features another solo by Quasimodo called An Ordinary Miracle, Jungle Book 2, Kronk's New Groove, which features a solo sung by the legendary Eartha Kid who plays Yzma, that song is called Like a Million, Lady and the Tramp 2, which has some great songs featuring Roger Bart and Susan Egan, as well as Jody Benson and Jeff Bennett. And both these Lilo and Stitch sequels, namely Leroy and Stitch and Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch Has a Glitch, have official albums out, and they are Lilo and Stitch Hawaiian Album and Lilo and Stitch Island Favorites, respectively. That's not all. The Lion King also has a couple of sequels, The Lion King 1 and a half, as well as The Lion King 2 Return to Pride Rock, and most recently The Lion Guard. The soundtrack for that will be released on January 8, 2016. And then there's The Little Mermaid 2, Mulan 2, Peter Pan 2, Pocahontas 2, and Tarzan 2 2. <laughs> Some great songs from these movies as well, like For a Moment in The Little Mermaid 2 where Ariel and her daughter sing a duet, and a gorgeous solo in Pocahontas 2 entitled Where Do I Go From Here, sung by the wonderful Judy Kuhn. Wrapping up the list, we have two more titles which have a slew of movies under their franchise. The Tinkerbell series has about six movies to date, and a couple more Pooh movies include Pooh's Grand Adventure, The Search for Christopher Robin, as well as Tigger and Pooh, a musical too. In line with all these sequels, Disney produced Disney Princess Enchanted Tales, Follow Your Dreams, the first film that attempted to create a new series of cost-effective movies by Disney Toon Studios. This film features two original stories from Sleeping Beauty and Aladdin and produced three new songs entitled Keys to the Kingdom, More Than a Peacock Princess, and I've Got My Eyes on You. Cassidy Ladin and Lea Salonga play the singing voices of Aurora and Jasmine, respectively. Eventually, Disney realized these sequels weren't working out so well for them, and production came to a halt. In fact, the animated musical as a form started to retreat from the scene. Mulan was the last animated feature that had characters singing. Starting with Tarzan in 1999, Disney had no animated musicals on their main lineup until 2009, when The Princess and the Frog was released. Disney music also extends to their live-action movies. While movies like Pirates of the Caribbean don't see their characters break into song, they also have a soundtrack and score. In the interest of time, let's look at some of the ones where the characters do sing, namely the musicals. Beauty and the Beast, that's coming up. 
Descendants also has a sequel coming up. Enchanted, this also has an upcoming sequel. There's Geppetto, written by Stephen Schwartz, featuring the song Since You Gave My Heart Away, sung by Geppetto, played by Drew Carey. And High School Musical 1 to 3, with a spin off movie called Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. Let's not forget Disney's version of Into the Woods, incorporating a new witch song, She'll Be Back, sung by Meryl Streep. And how can we not mention the Muppet series? There have been eight theatrical releases so far, and ones like the most recent Muppets Most Wanted has lots of musical numbers. So that's some of the live action movies. I'm sure that gives you lots to explore, although I haven't had time to mention many other songs, or even go into detail about some of the songs that I have mentioned. But if you think that's all to Disney music, you'll be even more surprised at how much more there is. There are spin-off albums. There's the Aida concept album. Spice Girls singing My Strongest Suit is in that album. And it also features Boys to Men, Janet Jackson, Tina Turner, Sting, Leanne Rimes, Shania Twain, Lenny Kravitz, and more. There's the Finding Nemo Ocean Favorites album, Frozen Fever, inspired by the Frozen movie. This features the single Making Today a Perfect Day, and not to be confused with the Lion King 2 soundtrack, Return to Pride Lands, Rhythm of the Pride Lands was originally an independent project featuring inspired songs, but as the project developed, Disney came on board. Little Mermaid fans will be glad to know there's a trilogy of albums inspired by the movie, and they are Sebastian from The Little Mermaid and Sebastian Party Gras. These two albums feature cover versions of classic calypso or reggae songs sung by Samuel E. Wright, who plays Sebastian. And the third album is The Little Mermaid Songs from the Sea. Now, this album features songs sung by Ariel that's not even in The Little Mermaid TV series. I'll talk about Disney TV series in a bit, but for now, let's wrap up with Woody's Roundup. See how that works out? Well, it's a collection of tunes inspired by the TV show featured in Toy Story 2, which leads us nicely to music from Disney TV series. Disney has many television series. Some are originals and some spin-offs from the movies. Some are non-musical and some musical in nature. Gravity Falls, for example, is a non-musical original. Originals that are musical in nature include Phoenix and Ferb and Johnny and the Sprites. Movie spin-offs that didn't really have songs were titles like 101 Dalmatians and Emperor's New School. The ones that did have a lot of songs were, in my opinion, Hercules and The Little Mermaid. Songs from The Little Mermaid series can be found in the albums The Little Mermaid Splash Hits as well as in The Little Mermaid and Friends. Timon and Pumbaa also had some songs like a duet entitled Alone Together. Unfortunately, like all the songs from the Hercules series, they have not been officially released anywhere. If you are hardcore enough, you will just have to rip each song from the actual footage itself. The Hercules series features about 28 songs, and you might not know this, including one song that Idina Menzel sang called One Good Man. Susan Egan also returns as Megara, singing The Man That I Love. Speaking of hardcore, we move on to our last music segment for this podcast, Disney Cut Songs. Some of us even go so far as to track down songs that were written for Disney, but were never officially released. Here are some that I know of. Humiliate the Boy from Aladdin. Reflection, a full version sung by Leia Salonga at her concerts. Written in Stone, also for Mulan. Love Can't Be Denied, supposedly for Frozen, sung by Brian Stokes Mitchell. All You Need Is You, for Cinderella 2, sung by Christopher Cusick. Enchanted, a duet between Adina Menzel and James Marsden for the movie of the same title. By the way, none of these lists are by any means exhaustive, so if you know of anything or something that we don't know about, please share it with us. I'll be happy to add it to the podcast notes, and I'm sure many Disney music collectors and enthusiasts will appreciate the information as well. With the podcast notes, don't forget there are links to much of the information that I've shared so far, so have fun exploring them. As you can imagine, music plays a huge part in Disney products. We'll have to continue exploring more of it in the next podcast. Join us in part two or Once Upon a Fairy Tale, the podcast episode nine to explore Disney music and musicals, cruise ships, parks, compilation albums, video games, foreign languages, and more. This is Disney Duane. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe on Facebook, like our Facebook page, and better still, share our channel with your friends. You can also follow me on Twitter at Disney Duane. Till the next one.